In this first video vignette, we'll show you how we present the case conceptualization to our clients. This would take place in the second or third session. In this vignette, we assume that there has been an initial session that included an intake, a history, and where the therapist has already presented the overall model of behavioral activation and sent the client home with reading materials. The case conceptualization is important as an evidence-based process in behavioral activation and in other empirically supported treatments. The therapist presents the case conceptualization according to events that have occurred in the client's life over the past week. We make the case conceptualization relevant to the client's own experience. We'll also introduce concepts that are important in behavioral activation, such as acting from the outside in rather than the inside out, and how to follow goal-dependent rather than mood-dependent behaviors. So you actually had some meetings scheduled and then you didn't mm -hmm. make it to them? Yeah. Okay. Um, how often did that happen? Um, over the last, well, I had one scheduled this week that I missed. And I okay. missed one the week before. All right. And my advisor's been trying to get us to meet at least every other week, All but right. Um, I'd say I missed about half those meetings. You had a lot of work to do. You hadn't gotten as much done. You've been struggling. You've missed appointments. You've got this appointment scheduled. You start to feel worried that your advisor, your committee, that they're all going to be disappointed in you. I think most people feeling worried and guilty would have a really hard time actually going through and going to the meeting, right? because these feelings almost dictate not doing it, mm -hmm. right? And I'm gonna just write here, we can refer to that as mood dependent. Does that make, does that ring true to you? Mood dependent behaviors, Yeah. yeah. right? Yeah, 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 because it's kind of like when you're feeling all right, it's not as, it's not as tough to do right. things, but. Right, if, you're, if you had gotten all of your work done, Yeah. And you'd been meeting with your advisor regularly. Well, yeah. You, would you be feeling worried and guilty? No. No, you'd probably be feeling maybe energized. It'd be easier to go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So with this mood, it made it harder to go. But when you sent your advisor the email, and as you said, you lied, you made the excuse. Um, did you feel any better at that point? No. No. What did you, what was the result then? We can say, then what happened? We can come back here. I stayed home. Okay. Yeah. So, we can, then you stayed home. What was happening with all the, these worries and feeling guilty and feeling hopeless? Well, at first I thought, I guess I, th I thought to myself that I was going to get some work done at that point, that I would just take the day to catch up and, okay. and reschedule and things like that. But, okay. but then just none of it happened. I just felt worse because okay. it was sort of like... So I'm going to say you felt worse. It's kind of interesting because what you just said also, uh, we can add to the what did, what did you do. Mm -hmm. You kind of... Uh, started to lie to yourself a little bit mm -hmm. too, right? So um, how would we say that? You didn't really lie to yourself, but you were, you were trying to talk yourself into getting more done? Yeah, I sort of made plans, but I okay. didn't follow through with them. Okay. Um, and then when you didn't follow through, what was your reaction to that in terms of what you were feeling at that point. Yeah, all those feelings kind of. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know about you, when I don't follow through on things, I also feel a little disappointed in myself. Yeah, well, yeah, that kind of guilty feeling was okay. sort of what got the so worst. So just put a little star. So yeah. I'm gonna draw, just to keep this visual going. Certain things happen. We feel a certain way. We act in a mood-dependent way. 
And sometimes what makes sense for us to do actually makes us feel worse, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and we could keep going throughout the day with this, that because once you started to feel worse, then what happened? Yes. You'd already stayed home. Yeah. Did you hear from the advi your advisor? Yeah. Okay. What was his response? He said we really need to schedule a meeting, that we'd missed a few, and it was pretty crucial that we meet in person soon. Okay. We really need to. It's pretty crucial. Mm -hmm. We haven't met in a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, that sounds a little bit like he was getting a little, maybe a little anxious himself. We don't know because we aren't him, but. Yeah, I think it felt like a lose-lose in that case, right? Okay. Like if I had shown up, he would have been upset because I hadn't gotten enough work done. But then not showing up upset him because I. Okay. So, so maybe it's all we can say because I don't know your advisor mm -hmm. and we can't be in his head is that at the very least he may have gotten concerned. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can put, I'm just gonna write under my, our mood dependent here, your advisor gets concerned. That becomes another event that happens. Now your advisor is concerned about you. Mm -hmm. As we're talking about that even now, what's happening to you? What's going on? As you're sitting there and I'm pointing out that your advisor may be concerned. It feels awful. Okay. Okay, what do you feel like doing right now? I don't know. I like kind of want to apologize. You kind of want to apologize? Yeah, just for okay. like missing. Like I, I guess I hadn't really realized. Like every time I reschedule, it feels like a new thing, right? Mm. But like what we're talking about it, it's right. This is not the first time this has happened. It's been like a while, and it just feels like this whole process is like a waste of his time. Okay, so you're having a lot of thoughts too. Mm -hmm. You think you're more likely to just show up at his office? tomorrow or this afternoon even after we're done? No, I no. Just, like I don't know if I could see him. Okay, so I'm just gonna put here less likely to meet. All right, now I don't wanna just, this looks like a pretty hopeless situation, right? We're not gonna stop here because the reason I'm doing all this um, is to, to show what happens when we are stuck in mood dependent behavior, right? So you're, you've been feeling depressed. You've been, it's, it may start with, um, you know, it started with your breakup, right? Your relationship ended, that really threw you for a loop. Is that basically when you kind of started on what we, what we talked about last week and what it says in that pamphlet, the downward cycle? Yeah, I mean, everything kind of got worse then like things were not wonderful, but like, uh, yeah, it, yeah, things got a yeah. lot worse. And so a lot of this got worse because most of us, when we're feeling down, it's harder for us to do things. And so I'm calling that mood dependent behavior. There's another um, term that I like to use that we could say that all of this acting is acting from the inside out. Mm -hmm. If we think sort of metaphorically about what we feel as being the inside of us, right? So if you're acting from the inside, so let me just write up here, inside here, based on your feelings, out, and we're stuck in mood dependent behavior, it can become a problem. Often if we act from the inside out, you and I were talking earlier and you said, you know, if you were feeling good, you would get the work done. If you had gotten the work done, you might have gone to see the advisor and, and everything would be great, mm -hmm. right? You know, we are we're, uh, 
excited to see friends, so we call them up, right? Acting from the inside out is not always bad. When your mood, especially when your mood is depression at the, as severe as yours has been, it, it gets us stuck. So if acting from the inside out, which is natural and which makes sense, is gonna get you stuck, the way out of this is to act from the outside in. And by that I mean you act according to a plan or a goal rather than acting according to a mood. It's not easy to do, right? But that's what I'm going to be helping you do in terms of uh, our work together. That's why, as I said earlier, and as I said last week, I'm going to work as a coach. It's like you and I together have to plan what the action's going to be from the outside, mm -hmm. right? What steps can you take? to go from having these appointments scheduled, having all these negative feelings, and then ultimately not going. Mm -hmm. To get you back moving forward where we will eventually get you to meet with your advisor. Um, maybe even get you to be playing soccer again. But if it was easy, you would just do it. So we're gonna talk about ways that we can Take some steps so you can begin to do these things that right now are really hard and probably feel almost gargantuan um, and break it down so that you're not having to just do this thing that is, seems like it's pretty, feeling pretty impossible for you to do. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Yeah, a part of me feels like other Like other things might just get in the way in a way sort of like thing. Like what? I guess it's just I could meet with my advisor, but I still have well, wouldn't have had the work done, kind of thing. Sure. Like it's just things that I've already started doing and set up are just it just feels like that the hole might be too deep to dig out of in this case. Well. Sure. I, I, I completely understand that it feels like the hole is too deep to dig out of. But if we could, what would, if, if, if you, if I could make it all better, mm -hmm. what would be the goal that you would reach right now? I don't mean ultimately like getting your doctorate. I know that's your goal. Mm -hmm. But just in this next week, what would be the goal? Yeah. I guess in this next week, yeah, I'd like to have a meeting with my advisor okay. where I could update him on the situation and at least know where I'm going next. Okay. So if we're working together for you to work from the outside in, what we want to do is start to identify some steps you could take to act toward the goal, not toward the mood. Mm -hmm. So to turn this mood dependent behavior around to be goal dependent. We'll see if you, it would be great if you met with your advisor. That would be, that's a good goal. Whether you reach that goal is not as important right now for our work together as um, us beginning to have you move forward. Okay? Okay. Does that sound reasonable to you? Yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah, it sounds reasonable. It okay. Feels a little like it's a band-aid. Like feels like it's a band-aid. Like the problem's kind of big. Like if I don't meet with my advisor, even if I'm moving forward, like is that enough? In the long run, no. Yeah. I mean, we can't just keep working together and you never meet with your advisor. Um, that would not really be. Oh, actually, though, that's a good point, though. That would not be working from the outside in. Because I said, I talked about the outside, I didn't talk about the in. So, that, so this is uh, good for me to point out to you. The hope is that as you're taking these steps and acting, so we'll, instead of acting toward the mood, you're gonna act toward the goal. That the more you act toward the goal, the better you're gonna feel. So that 
right now you act from the inside out, you feel pretty lousy so you don't do much. The hope is that as you begin to take steps to reach these goals, some of this guilt and worry and hopelessness is going to shift. And then, as you're feeling better, it's going to be easier to be meeting with your advisor and um, hopefully we'll all, we can also talk about some things, just practical things, that you're going to need to do to perhaps repair the relationship that's going on or to help him to understand what's been happening for you in terms of not getting as much done. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. All right. What did you notice about the ways that the therapist described the rationale for behavioral activation is very specific to Max's experiences? What were Max's hesitations about behavioral activation? What other challenges might clients raise as they learn about this treatment? How might you address those challenges? There are a few things that we'd like you to take away from this video vignette. First, there is no prescription for how you write out the case conceptualization. I wrote it out as three circles stating what happened, how did you feel, what did you do. You may be in the habit of writing what happened, what did you do, how did you feel. You may write it in other ways. What's important is that you communicate well to the client the connection between the events that occur in their life, their activities, and their mood, and how mood and activities influence one another. One goal of presenting the case conceptualization is to increase the client's motivation for change. By validating the client's experience of how they respond to their feelings and engage in activities that keep them stuck in the depressive cycle, we try and increase motivation for change by providing hope that there are changes that can be made in activity that can result in breaking free from the cycle. Another important part of the case conceptualization is to establish client buy-in about the therapy. If you notice, Max was concerned that if he just needed to do more things, he would have already done them. We want to validate that experience by engaging in the reality of what the client experiences and letting them know that we understand how hard it is to change. We can increase the likelihood that clients will see the usefulness of this treatment and begin to collaborate with us and work together in making positive changes.